All right, let's talk about how to um, change your frequency. So uh, it's a very useful skill to have. And to be honest, I'm not sure I really have this skill down pat, but I can tell you one thing. My frequency is a lot higher lately than it has been maybe ever. So um, I stumbled into something on Instagram a while ago where it showed this like frequency scale and I thought it was very interesting because um, it goes along with um, there's a book called the Kabbalion it's the hermetic you know if you ever heard of Hermes Trismegistus um, I think uh, the the Egyptians considered him a god like I, maybe Isis I'm not sure uh, this is the kind of stuff I do on Patreon eventually we're gonna go over the Kabbalion on there it, but it's been a long time since I've gone over the Kabbalion so to be honest I've forgotten a lot of it but one of the things that stuck with me when I was going over it was how they were saying that um, <clears throat> nothing is really as it seems in a sense so, you know, emotion, uh, let's say fear and love, those are just two of the easiest ones to deal with with this example. So you got fear on one end of the spectrum and love on the other. So really, they're not separate things. They're actually different degrees of one thing, which is, uh, you know, we according to our language and our way of thinking they're separate things but on from a different perspective they're the same thing they're just different degrees of the same thing they are opposite ends of the spectrum so according to the Kabbalion to perform alchemy you have to realize that it's the same thing as turning lead for, to turning lead into gold they're they're metal they're different ends of the spectrum so the first thing you got to realize to be an alchemist is that you can change these things you can transform these things it's just a matter of understanding it's a matter of perspective it's a matter of knowledge so now we're not talking about lead and gold although it is kind of a metaphor for how you feel when you're let's say shame and guilt is lead and enlightenment is gold you, you can you can move your way up the scale and change that so now you got to you also got to realize that you were raised in a world where the people who are in control have tricked you and they've tricked us all they they this entire thing is basically designed to keep you in a low frequency because when you're in a low frequency you're you're just you're just going to do it what what they want you to do which is generate wealth and give it all to them and then die <laughs> we're like cattle to them they, they milk us until we die they'll let you retire when you're 65 and you know um but so you got to realize they're trying to keep you in a low frequency now <laughs> how do they do that they they do it uh in a lot of ways the food we eat um the media we consume even down to the to the jobs we have to take i one of the I my first job was in fast food at Checkers, and I'll never forget putting on that uniform. <laughs> made me feel like such a clown. I mean, I had to wear these like black clawed hopper shoes, like 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 something that Herman Munster would wear. If you ever seen that old TV show, The Munsters, uh, these goofy clawed hopper black shoes, these cheap black ugly pants and this stupid checkers shirt and this stupid checkers visor my job was my first job was at checkers i only lasted a couple months um 
But the, the uniform I had to wear, it automatically put me in a lower vibe to wear. I just felt like a goofy goofball. Like, you know, I had no pride in it. I, I was in, I was kind of, I, I was a little embarrassed to be working at a fast food job. I just wanted to make money. I didn't care. Um, I wanted to work for, from when I was like 12, 13. I, I wanted to make money. I just didn't know how. And, you know, no one around me knew how to direct me in that. I knew no one would hire me because I didn't have, uh, it. it's illegal to hire a 12-year-old. When I think back on it, if I had kids now and they were 12 years old and they wanted to work, I would say, okay, I'll buy you a lawnmower and you can go around to the neighborhood and mow everyone's grass and charge them, I don't know, whatever you figure out what you're supposed to charge for that and do that and build up a business. You don't have to go work for someone else. You can do it yourself. Go, go buy cleaning supplies, go clean, you know, go clean people's cars, detail people's cars, figure out a good price. And that's what I would tell, tell my kid if I had a kid now, but my parents, uh, you know, they were boomers and they were just kind of out of touch with, you know, they just, they didn't know what to tell me. They were just like, no, nobody's going to hire you 12 years old. <laughs> so, um, what the hell was I saying? I, I just got completely off track. Oh, my, my first job at checker, the, you know, the uniforms they make you wear. Another job I had where I had this goofy, silly, they make you wear this, this cheap crap and you just feel like crap, and you're doing some crap job, and they're not paying you much, and it, it you know, they, it's all part of it, 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 the low frequency thing, you know what I mean? So, I remember towards the end when I had, uh, I had gotten evicted, and uh, at that point, there was no construction work, and I wasn't about to do anything less than that. But here's the thing with construction. Why I suggest... It's, it's a good business to be in. I Personally, be, it, it, here's the main reason. When you start off, you're probably not, not going to be getting paid a whole lot. But you'll be getting paid a lot more than I was when I started, first of all. Second of all, in construction, you're learning valuable skills. If you're paying attention... Now... I was working for the actual commercial contractor, so they they were trying to teach me to be a superintendent, so I was doing a lot of small stuff around the place, but in multiple trades, so I was learning a lot from all the tradesmen out there, you know what I mean? I was able to kind of bounce around and learn from everyone, and um, when they needed me to do something, they would show me how to do it, so... Um, now, you know, you'll run into people in construction who don't want to teach you because they see you as like a threat to their job. It's, it, it's a pathetic way to be. If you're good at your job, you're always going to have work unless the economy collapses. But even then, I don't, here's the thing. Let me stick with this subject. Let me, I guess I'll make this point while it's in my head. I don't care what the economy does. I don't care what the world does. I believe in myself. I believe in God's intelligence and will. I believe that whatever happens, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to figure it out. I'm a valuable person to have around. I don't care if the whole fucking society collapses. Anyone, I'm, I'm an asset. You know what I mean? So I'm not concerned. And here's the other thing. I don't care what the economy is doing. That there's going to be people capitalizing and making money. I, it, always. So don't worry about all this bullshit. Don't let them keep you all scared and shit. You're always going to, if you're, if you got the right mindset, you're always going to find a way. Uh, you're always going to find a way. So this was one of the best things about construction. I wasn't making much money, but I was learning skills that to this day I use all the time. I'm, I'm a creative person. I like to build things. I like to make things. I built all this back here. If I didn't do construction, I would have never had the confidence to even attempt something like this. You know what I mean? So, and even with the landscaping, I'm, I'm, I didn't want to take jobs that 
were useless. I wanted to learn valuable skills. I didn't care about hard work. So, you know, my advice to any young person, and I know I, I could never talk my brother into doing construction. I, I like, I don't get it. You want to sit in an office or work from home and I, I just don't get it. it. Wouldn't you rather be outside working, getting strong, le learning valuable skills? Like, my advice to any young person, get into construction, bro. Do carpentry, do concrete, do electrical, whatever, plumbing. It's all, it, it's all valuable skills that once you're good at it, you can work for yourself and it ain't hard. There's people everywhere who need work done and they don't want to pay a contractor to do it so <laughs> if you're good at it and you got the tools you'll find work bro i'm telling you there's even apps task rabbit or whatever personally i would do it without the apps i would put put up flyers or something just handyman for hire i'll do anything people need drywall fixes you know so construction is valuable skills my advice to any young people go go learn some trades bro and you, you're you're set for life. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world in the economy. Now, thinking back on it, if you know, I I could have stayed in construction if I if I was smart enough to do it on my own back then. But I back then I was like, nobody's hiring. Um, you know. But nowadays, if those things happened and I wanted to stay in construction. I just started working for myself. I didn't. I didn't have enough confidence back then to work for myself. I felt I needed to work for other people, and I, I thought, oh, I need a contractor license if I'm going to work by myself. It's not true unless you're doing structural stuff, which <laughs> I don't want to do structural shit anyway, unless I'm getting paid a whole lot of money to do it. But before I get too far off track, it, my advice to the young people: learn some trades, bro. It, it's you're learning valuable shit the whole time you're there. You're getting physically strong. When you're working hard labor all day, it ain't like working out in the gym because you're working out all day. It builds this this strength that it doesn't go away. I'm telling you. I, I, I'm older than I look, but physically, I'm like 20, bro. I can go all day working hard. I And it's because, it, it's because when I was younger, I did it so much that now it's nothing to me bro when there's when the, when i gotta work hard all day it ain't shit to me it don't bother me one bit and you know you build this muscle endurance when you're working all day like that where it stays with you bro i don't know how to explain it but it stays with you up real quick the first the, the first time i ever did hard labor all day i'll never forget it i was working doing side my first hard labor job we worked all day. <clears throat> By the end of that day, I couldn't believe how exhausted I was. I, I liked it. I was like, this is, I felt like satisfied, you know, but I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was completely worn out. The next day I was sore. I still woke up and showed up for work, still worked the whole day. And eventually within like a week i was like adjusted to it and i'm telling you the difference between me b before working hard labor and after it's like night and day it's like a kitten versus a, a leopard <laughs> you know what i mean i didn't realize how fucking weak i was and and i thought i was strong from doing push-ups and stuff you know i looked strong but i was not strong until i adju adjusted to working hard all day because when the way we were we were working with the side it, it, so it, it, we <laughs> this video is all over the place I'll, but so when we're doing a sod job we go out we tear up all the lawn with a sod cutter we remove all the lawn so we cut it all up and we we got to take it out by the roots basically so we're going up under the dirt and cutting it up now, ideally, it's coming up in pieces of sod. That never happens. It comes up in piles of dirt and grass, which I had to take notes for this video. Hopefully, I'll get to my notes at some point. So then we would rake it all into piles, scoop the piles into wheelbarrows, and then we roll the wheelbarrow over to this big-ass dump trailer, which is, like, above my head. 
and we pick the wheelbarrow up, one on each side, heavy as fuck sometimes, and dump it. When you're doing that all day, you're lifting heavy shit up over your head and dumping. We were we were fucking strong. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, we were a crew of some strong motherfuckers after doing that for years. It was, it was me and Albert mostly, but the Cuban was Albert. But we would have other people working with us sometimes when we had big jobs. And I'm telling you, we had a crew of just strong motherfuckers because we were doing some physically challenging shit all day, every day in the Florida sun. So we were just, it, it made us strong as fuck. Anyways, so <laughs> back to the point of the video now. <laughs> Jesus, man. Hopefully y'all still with me because I got some important things to say here. Now, shame and guilt are at the bottom of the frequency scale. I'll put up a picture of the frequency scale. You can you can screenshot it. It's just kind of a reference. It 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 it's not scientific. You know what I mean? Um. So how do you change the frequency? Now you first of all, if you're feeling shame and guilt you got to realize you're at basically the lowest frequency. It doesn't really get much lower than that. Uh, let me see if depression is on here. It doesn't even have depression on it, but shame and guilt probably lead to, you know, pretty depressing. Now, when you're in that frequency, you, working out probably seems like a, a climbing Mount Everest. You know what I mean? It's, it's fr from that frequency, just doing little things like push-ups and shit probably seems impossible. So, um, I, you know, I'm trying to think. I, I guess I'll put it to you this way. When I was younger and I didn't have the knowledge that I have, knowledge and experience that I have now, um, you know, I, cleaning my apartment would be like I, this horrifying I, thing that I, could, I couldn't even stand to think about it like every once in a while it would just be so filthy that I'd have to clean it just I couldn't take it anymore but I dreaded it you know what I mean nowadays my frequency is so much higher that I keep this thing immaculate I'm vacuuming all the time I'm sweeping out the entryways I'm cleaning the windows I I want to keep it clean because I'm at a higher frequency and it's nothing to me now it's not like this challenging chore that I got to do I'm just like Oh, there's some bullshit on the ground over here. Let me pull my vacuum out and get get that cleaned up because I like to see a nice crystal clear, clean, fresh carpet. <laughs> so I'm just at a higher frequency. You know what I mean? So how do you how do you get to that? How do you change that frequency frequency now? Do I feel shame and guilt? No, not really. Um, have I done shameful th things that should cause guilt? Sure, <laughs> we all have. But so why don't I feel shitty about it? I'll tell you why. Because I have learned to forgive myself. How did I learn to forgive myself? By learning to forgive others. So I couldn't tell you exactly how that went, but I can, uh, I saw this line, it was, um, there was a show called Locked Up Abroad, I don't know if you ever seen it, but one of the, my favorite ep episode, and this episode had such an impact on me that I, I, I have it downloaded on a hard drive, and to this day, I still watch it once in a while, here's what annoys me, they took out my favorite part, but it's still a great episode, it's um, Locked, up, Locked Up Abroad, Kuwait where this English kid moves to Kuwait with his um, father and uh, his father's like super rich and buys him dirt bikes and whatever he wants. That's why he went to live with his father because his father kind of spoils him. So he's living in Kuwait with his father. He's hanging out with all the other like foreigners living in Kuwait and some local Kuwaiti kids. They're like 16, 17 at the time. And drinking in Kuwait is illegal, I think. But these kids party, they drink, they smoke, I think, hash, and they party. Anyways, the kid goes to get, I think, maybe an ounce of hash or something. And uh, it was an undercover busting him. He gets caught. And 
he, he had this girlfriend at the time who was totally in love with and all this. Anyways, he ends up getting arrested in Kuwait, locked up. He's like 16, 17. And I think they gave him like 10 years or some shit, something crazy for distributing hash or something. And <laughs> so this kid is in Kuwaiti jail and he thinks he is, his life is over. I, and there's no AC. It's a fucking burning hot desert Kuwaiti jail. And he's in this cell with other Kuwaitis, although he said they were all kind of cool. Um, but what happened was while he was in jail, I forget how many years he had to do. It was, it was a lot. It was ridiculous amount. I think it was like 10 or 20 or something. And so this kid thinks his life is fucked. Anyways, he accepts his fate, and he's kind of being manning up about it. He's like in Kuwaiti jail, reading the Quran. It's, it's all he could get his hands on, and he's making the best of it. Next thing he knows, Iraq invades Kuwait. <laughs> and all the prison guards abandon the jail they just leave them all in the cells and they, they don't give a fuck about him and apparently there was this big strong syrian dude who busted out of his cell by kicking the door open and and then and then he opened all the other cells once he got himself out and they all escaped and he made it across the border to wherever i forget what country and uh he just made it out with the rest of the refugees made it back to england and he said what the line that stuck with me was he said he read these lines in the quran i don't know if these lines are really in the quran but this is what he said he said god help me to remember that um Help me to remember to not feel arrogant when I su succeed and not to feel hopeless when I fail and remind me always that forgiveness is the highest form of strength. And I remember hearing that last line, forgiveness is the highest form of strength. And, and I started really thinking about it. I was thinking to myself, is that the highest form of strength? Because in my head, I was thinking forgiveness is not strength it's you're letting people get away with shit it's that's not strength but then i was thinking it actually is strength because you're not letting them get away with it you're accepting that nobody is perfect and it's so it comes back to love and fear now from a, a fearful perspective I'm not going to forgive him. That's that would make me weak. I got to get him back because you're afraid you're going to look weak or whatever. Or you you know what I'm saying? Now from a loving perspective, you're thinking sure, I can I can kill the motherfucker. I can do this. I can do that. I can get my revenge. But I'm going to let him go because because I understand that we all make mistakes and it's not based on fear it's based on love it's based on for me personally the reason I try to be as forgiving as possible is because I know God forgives me and I know God forgives everything and everyone I'm not going to get into my definition of God but let's just call it God to keep things simple <clears throat> God forgives everything I don't care what you've done. <clears throat> if you genuinely want forgiveness, God's going to give it to you. <clears throat> that doesn't mean <clears throat> we can go around and break God's laws and do horrible things. And then just at the end of the day, forgive me, God, I'm sorry. And then you wake up the next day and you do it again. That's not how it works. That, it, that You don't get forgiveness when you're trying to use it as like a, a get out of jail free card it only god forgives everyone who genuinely wants forgiveness if you realize i made a mistake i am not going to do that again because i was dead wrong god forgive me god's got you he's going to forgive you every time god's judgment is beyond the judgment of man so 
you know, what here's 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 the thing. I'll put it to you this way: God forgives things that I would not forgive. I am not strong enough to forgive. I am not, you know, I don't have the full, complete understanding of all creation and existence. So, I there's things that I do not forgive because I am not strong enough to for, forgive those things. But the way I see it nowadays is it does take strength to, to forgive people. Violence is easy. Revenge is easy. That's easy. That's, you're just satisfying your emotional, you're not thinking, you're not, you're not think, thinking in terms of like the big picture where, you know, violence begets violence. And, you know, vengeance is mine, said God. And you may not see it, but God doesn't forget, and God sees everything, and everyone pays a price for the things they do. So whether you take revenge or not, they're going to pay a price for whatever they did in this life or the next one or for the next 10,000 lives. Every, everything comes back to us. So, you know, so... Why, you know, why don't I feel shame and guilt for the things I did? Sometimes I do a little bit, but I remember that God forgives me because it was a mistake. And here's the thing. If, if you have to make mistakes, if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. This is why God forgives everything. Because if nobody was willing to ever make mistakes, the, the universe would not, would not evolve. It, it, the universe is collectively learning through all of us. So, you know, mistakes have to be forgiven. It's just the way things work. Uh, things can't expand and evolve without forgiveness. It's, it's stagnation. It's death. So, without forgiveness. So, am I saying that you should let people slap you across the face and then forgive them? <laughs> no. I'm not saying that if somebody slapped me across my face, we're fighting, bro. <laughs> like, I, I'll forgive him. I'll forgive him afterwards after I get my licks in. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it, here's, the, here's the thing. You don't have to forgive anyone. But here's the reality of the situation. Hanging on to these negative emotions and these negative feelings, it is is hurting you. It's keep, it's keeping your vibration low. You ain't doing nothing, man. Maybe slightly on a quantum scale, you're, but we're not even going to get into that. Here's the thing. Hanging on to negative emotions, anger, it, shit like that, is unhealthy, number one. I believe, and I've heard this from multiple sources, anger, suppressed anger, actually turns into cancer. It turns inward and and mutates your cells. It turns into cancer. So don't sit there stewing with rage because it's bad for your health. So there's that aspect of it. Second of all, it's keeping you in a low vibration. You're 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 hurting yourself. You're making yourself feel like shit over someone else's mistake, which they're going to pay for whether you force it or not. So here's the thing. We're all here to learn, and none of us are perfect. So I try not to judge. I do judge. I, I am not Jesus Christ. I am not the creator himself. I am a person. I believe I am a higher evolved being, spiritual soul in a third density person's body <laughs> but to keep things simple I'm a person and I'm not perfect and I have animal instincts in me that make me want revenge at times but I know that it's wrong because it's it, it's just adding to the pain and suffering of the world really what it all comes down to and I don't want to do that even to evil people evil people. Here's the thing. Who's to judge good and evil? That's God's job. That ain't my job. Uh, it, I'm not here to judge. It, you know what I mean? 
I still judge, but I try not to. And so I try to forgive others because I know God forgives me. And I know God wants me to try to forgive others. So I try. And I, I can tell you one, one thing from experience. It does raise my frequency. Now, my frequency now is higher than it's ever been. I feel great. You know what? When you feel great, you attract great things. It, so, it's like, you know, you're going to attract things according to your frequency. So, it's an important thing. Now, the frequency chart, uh, you know, now, according to the Kabbalion, the way to change from, you know, whatever feeling you're feeling, which you don't want to feel, you have to think of its opposite on the scale. So, I, I, I personally, I don't know. What is the opposite of anger? I, I don't know. What is the exact opposite of anger? Is it laughter? I can tell you one thing. Laughter is an amazing cure for, for low frequency. So, I'll tell you a quick story how I discovered this. My mother died unexpectedly. She had cancer. But I didn't think she was going to die because she had, had, she had had cancer in the past and beat it. So she had cancer again. She was sick again. Man, this video is getting long. And I didn't know she was going to die. And then she died. <clears throat> and I was very shocked and depressed. And I did not feel good at all. I didn't think I would ever feel good again. Because my mother was the most important person in the world to me. The only per person on earth I was very, very tight with. I mean, I love my brother, I love my father, but me and my mother were tight in a different way. So, you know, me and my mother, I could like, we could read each other's minds. A very similar sense of humor, I, I, you know. So, I was very depressed. I didn't think I'd ever be happy again. I went and got a personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut, which used to cheer me up. This, this was maybe a couple days after my mother died. And it tasted like fucking ashes. It did nothing for me. I was like, man, there's no more... No more... I, life... I didn't care. A bolt of lightning could have hit me at that point. I wouldn't have cared. I didn't... I was depressed. I was upset. And... The TV was on. And... It, it was one of these funniest animal shows where it shows the animals doing stupid, funny things, and it's funny. And I didn't even want to laugh. I didn't, uh, but I didn't, I, I was barely paying attention to it. Next thing I know, I'm seeing these animals doing funny things, and I'm fucking chuckling at some of it, despite myself. I didn't even want to laugh. I didn't, I, I didn't even know if it was okay for me to laugh. I, my, my mother just died, you know? Anyways, by the end of that show, I had laughed at a few things, and I realized that I can still feel good, even if it's just for a couple of minutes at a time. Because after the laughter, I felt sad again about my mother, but I realized I can feel good again, even if it's just for a minute or two at a time. It's possible. If I see something genuinely funny and, I, and it fucking cracks me up, I'm going to feel good for a couple of seconds. So I realized there was still good in the world. Now... So, you know, whatever feelings you're feeling, maybe, maybe what you need is a laugh. Because laughter is a powerful thing. It, it, it's healthy. It's, it, it cures everything, in my opinion. So, this is why, you know, just instinctively, but I've found humor in the darkest of times. <laughs> I'll give you a quick example. So... <clears throat> I've told this story in a previous video. It was New Year's Eve 2012. I'm sitting in Charlie's under Penn Station because I don't want to freeze to death outside and I got to go make money tonight. I'm saving my tolerance for the cold for tonight. I'm going to go to Times Square. I'm going to make a bunch of money. I'm sitting in Charlie's doing nothing and worried, very worried. I'm brand new to being homeless. Anyways, I'm in a fucked up state of mind. I... I wouldn't, the world was supposed to end 2012, I didn't care if it ended or not, I was hoping it would end, anyways, I'm sitting there at the table, depressed, feeling like shit, freezing outside, I'm afraid to go outside tonight to go work, I'm dreading it, 
but I need to go make money. I hear on the TV, there was like a football game on ESPN, college football, the Ducks versus the Wildcats. And I thought to myself, well, that doesn't sound like a very fair contest. And despite all the shit going on in my life, I was sitting at that table chuckling at that. It struck me as so funny, like Ducks versus Wildcats. I'm like... Those poor ducks are going to get fucking slaughtered, you know? And to me, I, it was cra- it cracked me up, and I needed that laugh, laugh. And I felt a little better, you know what I mean? It's just, it, 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 it struck me as truly hilarious at the time. I don't know how funny it is to anyone else, but in my circumstances, I'm homeless, I'm, you know, freezing to death, I'm uh, huddled up in Charlie's and Penn Station, just spent the last of my money on some shitty little cheesesteak and the ducks versus the wild cats, and I'm fucking, I was cracking up at it, <coughs> and so, how do you change your frequency? Well, according to the Kabbalion, you gotta figure out what is the exact opposite feeling of the low vibe feeling you're feeling and you try to move yourself up that scale so let's say the exact opposite of anger is laughter go go find something to laugh at look something up on youtube or something funny um anything funny uh you know what's funny to me is you ever seen that show scare tactics it's fucking hilarious bro they it's these pranks where they scare the absolute shit out of people. They make them think they just witnessed a murder or something, or they make them think they're about to get attacked by a Bigfoot, or it's it's really funny. <laughs> it's funny because it's so ruthless. Like, they pull the most ruthless pranks on people to where these people think they're about to die. <laughs> and then they all pop out like, eh, it's just a prank, and they're like, Huh? <laughs> like, I mean, the show is so funny, dude. I've I've got a bunch of episodes on a hard drive. It it cracks me up to this day. It's very funny. Anyway, so that's one example is anger. Now, here's the thing with anger. I've had issues with anger in the past. I, I still have issues with anger. Here's the thing with anger for me. It always leads to shame. I can act like the, you know, the... The ang- when I let the anger control me and I act like an angry asshole, once the anger passes, a couple days later or whatever, I feel shame. And so I go from anger, which is slightly higher than shame on the scale. I- I'll put the scale up on the video. Which it, the-, the anger leads to shame, which is the bottom of the scale. You know what I mean? So... You got to control your anger, bro. You got to... I know it's easier said than done. I've been on the verge of snapping and thinking to myself, you got to control your anger. And there's another part of me saying, I don't give a fuck about controlling my anger. I I don't want to hear it. (laughs) You know what I mean? When I'm angry, I'm fucking angry. But you live and you learn and that's that's the thing you try to learn to control your emotions and you try to calm cool and collect it you know what i mean so hopefully this helps look i i don't care what you did i don't care i really don't care what you did i can tell you for a fact god forgives you so accept that grace be grateful for it and try to pass it on try try to be forgiving i understand people people probably done you wrong out there they did me wrong too lots of times but when all said and done it didn't matter you know it, it really didn't matter the the way things played out the the way things unfolded um nobody ever did nothing to me that uh that i didn't bounce back from pretty quickly so you know it really when time passes, it's you realize whatever it was, it, in a way, they kind of did you a favor. They took a karmic hit to teach you a lesson. You know what I'm saying? And you probably learned some valuable stuff from it if you, if you, you, know, if you look at it from the right perspective. So everything happens for a reason. We all make mistakes. God forgives you. And 
you you got to here's the thing you got to learn to forgive yourself so one of the things that helps me forgive myself is forgiving others you know what i'm saying so that's my video on how to change your frequency and uh maybe i'll make another video about it in the future um we'll see how this one turns out because there there's more too anyways so i appreciate every single one of y'all lots of videos i want to make um i got a lot of interesting videos coming up but uh yeah don't don't let don't here's the other thing with the diet don't eat whatever you want but in my opinion the healthiest foods are fresh fruit fresh vegetables fresh meat and so when i'm at, when i when i want to eat healthy what i'll do is i'll cook a steak in my air fryer i'll i'll eat some apple avocado uh olives steak maybe a piece of cheese but very simple stuff you know i don't um i I don't go get a cheeseburger from McDonald's. You know what I mean? So when I'm I'm talking about when I'm trying to eat healthy. I eat very simple, very basic, very I try to eat foods that have not been interfered with, just grown out of the ground. You know what I'm saying? Or a steak, you know, not some frozen preservative filled TV dinner or something, just a fresh steak, fresh you know, fresh, simple food is, I believe, the healthiest. So that's going to help your frequency. You know what I'm saying? Um, what doesn't help your frequency is things that, that are very processed and very, you know, soda or TV dinners, frozen crap, you know. So, you know, watch what you eat, watch what you think, watch what you consume with the media don't let them put you in a panic about whatever's happening in the world it's all a big show bro I, I ain't concerned with it whatever happens I'm gonna be all right and and you will be too if you keep your head on your shoulders and you stay true to yourself and you stay true to God and you do your best at all times you know so make make the best of whatever's going on and you're gonna be all right and Try, you know, try not to let them pull you down into these low frequencies because it ain't it ain't your natural state anyway. Your natural state is a high frequency. So, a um, couple butterflies, like, dancing in the field over here. So, anyways, I guess that's the end of this one. I pre appreciate every single one of y'all. Thanks for the subs. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the tips. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. We'll see what it's going to be. I might do another video about getting off the opiates. Uh, I've got some new things to say about that. We'll see. i got a list of videos. But um, anyways, I'll see you on the next one. Everybody have a good one.